today we are going to start working on uh, plying the hankies and the YouTube channel has the spinning of them so I'm gonna put my coffee down it's a hard thing y'all sometimes so I've got we've got it we're gonna do two different ways of plying I'm still plying the hankies to hankies so the silk is just gonna be plied to itself I made two bobbins you can see I did two bobbins and they're not super full I don't need a lot I'm gonna make uh, some jewelry a couple little bracelets and I will show you how to do that in another video we're just gonna keep going on and progressing and then eventually the challenge will change to a different fiber or just a different challenge maybe so we're gonna do a little bit of plying regular plying from the bobbins from the wheel we'll ply them on to another wheel and then I'll do a little bit of Andean plying from the um, the singles that are on the spindle so now if you've been in a class with me you know that I'm not a fan of the onboard lazy Kates and today I'm working with a Louette that has an onboard lazy Kate but this is obviously not that. This is the Lazy Kate that comes with a Shaft Reefs. So my point being why an onboard Lazy Kate isn't good. You're pulling up and then feeding it in. Pulling up and then feeding it in. Which isn't a good ergonomic movement. Uh, it tends to sometimes pull from one bobbin more than the other and you end up with twisty turnies and I mean this fiber doesn't have a lot of twist to it well it does it has enough but silk especially the hankies just feels kind of dead it just sort of lays there so that's not necessarily a problem except that it's sticky so it tends to stick to itself the better option and what I try to get people to do is to take your lazy cake and put it beside and behind you and then you can see I got my two things and my hands are sticky that's just the way it is I am going to post a blog post soon I'm gonna give you a couple of little recipes for you to help fix your hands I don't know I don't know if there's an actual fix I did buy a or my husband bought it for me at one point, a, um, a wax thing to dip your hand in. So you put lotion on, dip your hand in wax, heated hot wax, and it sort of keeps the moisture in your hand. As a potter and a farmer, my hands are trashed, trashed. So anyway, we're gonna do our best, and then I will, um, give you a couple recipes that'll help you and it's one of those things that you do right before you work with the silk so I've got it attached to the wheel and I am just going to go 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 now I tend to keep let's see this back hand my fiber supply hand I just keep one finger between the two plies and that's to keep them sort of even and it's just going and going and going now the Louette is geared really low and it takes a while to get the twist in and you can see um, my Louette has a little bit of a squeak going on and I need to oil it so I'm not gonna torch you guys with too much of the Louette spinning but you can see this is just how I spin oh my gosh that's awful and let me pull out the little bit that I've already done. Let's see if you can see that. A little bit in the light. You can see that it's twisted together. And it kind of melds together really well. It doesn't, you know, some of the, some of the fibers that feel sort of dead when you're spinning them, they just sort of don't have that crunch and you know that lovely sproying that like wool has the stuff that just sort of lays there sometimes doesn't meld together well but I have to say the silk hankies they just do 
and you can see how it twisted up a little bit on itself and that's fine that will settle out when I wash it out if you've been in any of my twist classes you know that that's how I teach to do it let's see can you see that you can see a little bit of the twist it's melding together really well it's um, a nice twist I'm twisting it together not loosely I'm making sure that it's well done and the reason for that is I'm gonna be stringing beads on this I think I mentioned it in the first video that I did about the silk hankies is I'm gonna be doing a beaded thing with it and I will show you that maybe next week I haven't decided exactly my progression here but in the next week or two I'm gonna be showing you how I use this stuff so you'll be seeing how how I use it and I do need it to be um, really nice and I need it to um, be as smooth as possible I mean the little lumps and the little nips that happen there's we talked about those in other videos um, those are fine the little nips and stuff they're smooth they will smooth down a bead can go over them what I'm talking about is I just want it to not be too lumpy bumpy I don't want to have a lot of variation in my plying I didn't want to have a lot of variation in my singles so I don't want to have some areas loosely plied some areas tightly plied so this is one of those things that I'm gonna to need to pay a little bit more attention with sometimes you might need to count the treadles how many one two three and then I let a bit go in one two three let a bit go in uh, on the Louette it's gonna be more than one two three let a little bit go in it's geared so low that I'm gonna to need to do a little bit more um, a little bit more foot movement in order to get that to work for me but one of the things to do is to keep taking it out take a look at it is this is does it look how I want it to look are the plies laying on by beside each other or sort of just maybe lazily going over each other that's not enough for me I need it to really be twisted together and really be combined so for me that's what I'm going for if you want a lazy ply say um, if you're doing something like lace, because lace, when you have a lazy ply and the little nubs sort of stick out and the yarn is flatter, those little nubs that stick out tend to stick to one another better. So that makes the holes stay better when you block out a shawl. If that's what you want to do with it, then maybe you want lazy plies. For me, for the jewelry, if you're following along and you want to do the beaded stuff that we're doing you need less than an ounce of this stuff uh, then you also need to spin it the way that I'm spinning it so uh, I will post a blog post and go over a lot of those details so that you can follow along and do the exact project that I'm doing start to finish you might want to wait until you see the final product before you do this uh, but I'm gonna make sure that all the information is there and available while the Instagram videos are live that's why I'm posting them to YouTube so that you'll have them 